back to George's cooking channel. Tonight we are going to be making ginger crunch. Uh, this was after the decision of making bagels, then I realised I had hardly any flour. So, a bit of a change there. I have got some yeast kind of sitting here which we will not be using. So we're going to put that to one side. But no, ginger crunch has just the perfect amount of flour. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, so we've melted up a whole heap of butter and we're going to basically mix that in a whole heap of sugar and make like a creamy thing. Should be good. This is this is the butter and cream being mixed together. I only have a fork because our whisk broke, but I reckon it had the same effect. So I'm measuring out one and a quarter cups of flour, which isn't easy because we don't have a one and a quarter cup cup. I do have a one cup and a quarter cup cup. I reckon I could do kind of a bit of both, add them together, maths kind of thing. Now that I've got that measured out, I'm going to sift that in to our butter cream mixture. To that, I'm also going to add some, some ground ginger, some baking powder, which I'm going to measure out now. So here we have some ground ginger. That's one teaspoon. I was considering using actual ginger, or like ginger paste, but apparently ground ginger is where it's at. Get the right consistency. And that's all this is about, consistency. Got some baking powder here. I'm not quite sure what baking powder is. It's kind of like this magic ingredient you can kind of add to anything and just it makes baking stuff happen. So we're going to add that in. One and a half teaspoons. And now we now we kind of sift all this in the sifter. This is the fun part, really, the sifting. Because it's just you know it's fun. Look at that. Woo! I'm at the part of the recipe where you realise you have to preheat the oven. So I'm going to do that now. There we go. Oven is being preheated. Probably a bit later on than necessary, but it's being done. While the oven is being preheated, I'm going to mix all these ingredients together with one hand while looking at the camera. Oh, look at that. Woo! Making a funny sound now. See how fast we can go. There we go. Get out of control. Okay, better calm that down. There we go. Stable. Actually looking pretty good for the amount of effort put into it so far. So I'm going to give it the old taste test to make sure it's sufficiently ginger enough. That's pretty ginger. So now basically we just chuck it in the oven and we have the ginger crunch part. And then we just put the icing on top. It's so simple. While searching for a muff for a blah, 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 blah. while searching for a tin, uh, I found this tray. So I decided to make miniature ginger crunch circles and this, 12 of them. I don't think it's ever been done before, so we're going to see how it goes. I'm hoping for great results. I'm filling up the muffin tray with, with bits of ginger, but I'm not quite sure how much to put in. So I've just decided to put all of it in across the 12 of them, and hope for the best. They might be a little bit chunky, but I'm not quite sure if that's a bad thing. I reckon it's just going to be a more unique experience. And that's, that's what I like in cooking, having unique experiences. Because you don't just want your regular ginger crunch. You want a ginger crunch that brings something else to the table. And I reckon a chunky circular ginger crunch is, is something unique. All the ginger crunch mixture is in the muffin tray. Now I'm going to use the back of a spoon, not the back, not the front, the back of the spoon, to press down on top to smooth it out. I'm not quite sure what this is achieving, but the recipe makes it quite clear that this is a very important step. So we're doing we're doing this. I don't I think I don't think I uh, well. What what do you what do you think? Does that look right? Pressing down. I think it would make more sense in a square tin. After reading the recipe again, I've actually seen that it's actually after you take the tray out of the oven is when you do the back of the spoon thing. That makes a lot more sense. Anyway, these have been pre-spooned, so we should be should be even better than before. Our oven has finished preheating, so we can put some stuff in there now. There we go. Now we set that for about 20 to 25 minutes. Surprising twist of events. 
the ginger crunch base has started to rise, which is not what I expected. You can kind of see it's like little donuts in there. Little crunchy donuts. We'll see what happens in the next 12 minutes. Stay tuned. Part two of the recipe calls for a saucepan and 100 grams of butter, which I don't know if we have 100 grams of butter, seeing as most of it went in the first part. So this is going to be interesting. Um, we do have margarine. No. Oh, getting a hard no on that one. Table spread, soft and spreadable. Hmm. Hmm. I reckon we just make the butter go the distance and see what happens. We have 37 grams of butter. That's about one third of the required amount. This may not quite work as expected. Or we could divide all the toppings by three and then we'd have slightly less topping. But the perfect ratio of butter. That might be the only solution. I've cut down on the icing. Seeing as we only have one third the amount of butter. So this requires to take one cup of icing sugar and turn it into one third of a cup of icing sugar. Now I don't know why but none of our measurements measure one third of a cup. So what we're going to do is kind of just guess. That looks like one third of a cup. We probably could put a little bit more in and just make it slightly less buttery icing. So we're gonna, actually I probably should read the recipe before just chucking this in. Heat all the ingredients in a small saucepan, stir until melted again. Okay, so we're going to chuck it in the saucepan and see what happens. Continuing on our maths adventure, we need to take two tablespoons of golden syrup and divide that by three, which is slightly less than one tablespoon. So I'm just going to guess and just sort of squirt a bunch in. That's about right. Continuing the theme of things that are not divisible by three, we have four teaspoons of ground ginger, which I assume is about one teaspoon and a third. We don't, have a, we don't have a third of a teaspoon measurement. I don't know why. It's not a thing. It's just like one, one quarter, one half. Who needs a third? So dividing things by three was a poor choice. We should have gone like by half and then subtract a bit. Anyway, so that's all the stuff in there. Butter started to melt. I'm going to start mixing it together. See what happens. Hopefully icing appears. That's the plan anyway. We'll check back soon. It's actually not looking too bad for for what it is. Looking very icingy. Not much of it though, but that's that's kind of what you'd expect. So it's gonna might give us a taste test and kind of adjust ingredients as we go. We need to add a bit more of something. It smells very gingery. Very gingery. We got another update on the crusts in the oven. They're starting to go very funny looking. Double tap, there we go, look at that. So, we've got three minutes on the clock until we hit 20 minutes. I'm thinking because these are a lot smaller than your average ginger crunch tin, we might not need to do the full 20 minutes. So, might take them out now and do the whole, do the whole thing with the icing. Recipe for a third time. I see it says, smooth out the edges with the back of a spoon. Which makes sense, seeing as the edges are all rised up. Now because I have decided to make 12 of these, I have a lot more edges than I normally would. So this might take a while of forcing them all down and flat like that. Basically we kind of want a crust, a flat crust looking thing we could fill with icing. So, so one downside of making 12 small ginger crunch things is a lot more, a lot more of this going on. Our bases are looking pretty good, they're all smoothed out. Time to taste test for icing. Just grab a small spoonful there. Mmm. 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 Taste test number two. Mmm. More, more of the icing that time. That's, that's pretty good. Not, I don't know if we have enough of it to cover 
all that. So we're about to find out. I'm going to start spooning it from there onto there, flatten it down, see how many we can cover. We might end up with a very thin layer of icing on each one, which might work. It might, you know, it's just, it's just how it happens. All the icing has been poured out into each individual little ginger crunch cake, and it's actually looking pretty good. It's a very thin amount, but, you know, it's a very strong flavour, so you don't need that much, really. And it actually looks like little 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 tarts or something, little pies, little ginger, you know, something you'd buy in a bakery. You probably, probably wouldn't pay too much for it, but something you could buy, I reckon. Like, like you know, this is this is going to be pretty good. I'm excited for this. I had a little, I had a little taste of the of the serving spoon, and it is very gingery, which is good. You know, ginger crunch should be gingery. I reckon it's kind of a kind of a given there. So I reckon just let it sit for a bit, cool down. When we bite into one and get the verdict. After consulting the recipe for the sixth time, I've noticed that the second step is grease and line a 25 by 20 centimeter baking tin. Now I skipped the first part and just chose a muffin tin, but I forgot to grease it, so I have a feeling these little cakes might be a pain to get out. I've got a knife here. I was trying to sort of wedge it in the side, and it's it's pretty firm. There's there's not much, not much wedging going on there. It's more just sort of breaking it apart. So I think I might have to get a little bit creative of how to remove these from the tin, which wasn't what I was expecting to happen. Just come across a little, this one in the corner, pops right out. Look at that guy. Isn't that cute? Actually, just come on, stay out. This is a slippery bugger. There we go. Look at that. Look how cute that is. See? Look what I'm talking about. Little, little cake, little cake thing. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a bite. I'm gonna give it a. Should we give it a big bite or a small bite? I'm just gonna give it a nibble. I think a nibble is a, a, probably a good idea. Mmm, 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 mmm. It's a bit chewy, but it tastes really good. Mmm. No, I'd give us give us an eight out of ten. Execution could have been better. I'll give you that, but I reckon a uh, good recipe. And I'm getting the hang of the knife wedge pop. So you just press down, and then press hard enough, it pops right out like that. Every time. Now this this is much this is much better. Look at that a little, little jump, it pops straight out. Every time. So, you know, don't necessarily have to grease the tin. Yeah. Ginger crunch. So, what did we learn from tonight's little cooking mission? One, pays to have enough ingredients so you don't have to divide things up. If we had enough butter, this would have been a lot easier. Two, preheat the oven before you start, not after. Read the recipe. I, I, I read the recipe. In I, advance. Read it thoroughly, double check each part of it, because the earlier you learn to do something, the more likely you actually do it. And muffin trays, muffin trays are a good idea. You get to hold the tart, the crunch, in your hand, and it's chewy. Very popular. Highly recommend that. I'm going to call that the Sabania Crunch. See you next time. Ciao.